Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a freelance writer. I put together a newsletter called Garbage Day. It's about... Uh... Oh, that was weird. Okay, cool. Sorry, I haven't been outside in about 16 months, so this is very exciting for me. Um, so yeah, I'm kicking things off with a little presentation, kind of getting everyone in the mood for tonight. Um, so if we can, we can go to the first slide here uh, that I've got set up. How do I do this? Do I do this? No, that's me. Okay, hi, this is me. Hi. Great. Okay, so my presentation is called The Internet is Magic, or How to Use the Powers of Viral Content to Connect with Higher Levels of Reality and Perform Powerful Spells. So I've noticed a, a trend online over the last... Uh, year, but especially like the last couple years, where um, there's occultism on the internet. People are really into the idea that you can like change reality with viral content. And I've organized it into three categories. So first, we have what I call uh, witches and goth stuff. And this, this uh, usually includes what I'm going to call bone crimes, and we're going to get to that. Um, so the next category is crystals. Um, I think that's Spencer from Heidi, Heidi and Spencer, like those two, and he's putting a crystal on his forehead. And this is, yeah, popular with QAnon moms, but also Burning Man tech bros. And then the third one is a little more amorphous, but I promise it will make sense. This is called Manifesting. It was big on 4chan for a while, but it's having a big comeback on TikTok. So, interestingly enough, if you combine all three branches of internet occultism, no, yeah, you get Grimes, <laughs> which I think is really interesting. Really speaks a lot to her whole deal, I think. Um, right, so in the beginning of the internet, they were basically just goths. Based on my research, about 40% of early internet users were goths. Here's a fun fact. Uh, no, not yet. Here's a fun fact. Vampirefreaks.com was a social network from 1999 until 2020, which makes it one of the longest running social networks on the internet. Now I think it's just like a spiky shoe store. Um, <laughs> Another fun fact, I found this out from a really good Vice uh, article the other day. There was an early internet called PodsNet. It stood for like Pagan and Occult Distribution Systems Network. And it was basically like an internet for witches and pagans. And they had a six year debate about whether or not the singer Kate Bush was Wiccan. I think that's really cool. Uh, and like a really good precursor of all internet discourse to come. So, there were also weirdos on Craigslist. I think this is an important post. I don't know if you know this post, but it's a really, really important post to me. Uh, so it's called Charge Up and J-O. I don't think I need to define what that means. The crystal I wear around my neck contains an essence that gets recharged when I jack it with a bro who, who also has a crystal. It gives me confidence at work, home, social situations. Nobody knows it's a J-O crystal, but me and my bros, I have seen it glow white while jerking it with a bud. That's how I know this is real. You can come over for as long as you want, but I need a picture of you wearing the crystal, preferably before I waste my time. So here's a really interesting fact that has nothing to do with the rest of my presentation. That Craigslist post was posted on the same day as the imitation crab meat Cra Craigslist post. I don't know if anyone here knows this, but it's a big deal for me. So this is, want age 25 to 70 guy to come over and J.O. in my model train room. Mutual touching and stuff, but nothing more than that. I'm not gay, this is H.O. scale. Then after you, we finish, you can stomp around and kick the trains like a monster, but don't break them, they're my sons. We can do this until 4 a.m. or until we get tired. Also, I have a lot of imitation crab meat in my freezer that I need to get rid of, so you can have a bunch when you leave. It's all perfectly good, we just got way too much. Like I said, this has nothing to do with the rest of our presentation, but I needed to tell the entire world that these two posts were on the same day. Okay, so then there were other kin. This was a few years after sort of the goth wave. If you're not familiar with, who, who knows what other kin are? Anybody here? Okay. Well, for anyone who doesn't, I like to think of them as the inverse of furries. Furries wear the animal suits on the outside. Other kin like to use the power of blogging to explain that they're like dragons or wolves on the inside. Here's my favorite example of other kin art. And this is a man violently transforming into a Charizard. And I, this is from a DeviantArt account, and I love this. I, there's another one that I, I didn't want to share where it's this, but a cow, and the utter transformation process is horrible, so I didn't include that. Right, so every few years, the internet rediscovers lucid dreaming. This is going to be important for later. So this is a, a, a 4chan green text thread. I'll read it uh, briefly for you. Read a thread on a ritual that allows you to lose a dream. Attempted, it, it actually works. I can lose a dream. If I can fly, I can fly. If I'm a president, I'm a president. 
Other characters start to appear in my dream. They start having flashbacks of their own. Peter Griffin is a character in my dreams. I have no power over him. <laughs> Every time he has a flashback, I'm forced to play along. Every night I'm trapped in an episode of Family Guy, become terrified of sleeping. Eventually my body caves and I fall asleep. Every night I'm subjected to a hellscape of pop culture references and poop jokes. That's terrifying. Um, so this is important because we're gonna talk about bronies now. So you guys know what bronies are? Yeah. yeah. Most of them are now like running for Senate as like QAnon candidates. But in 2014, they were just like very, very awful adult men who loved My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And they became very obsessed with the idea of harnessing the power of the internet to manifest cartoon ponies into real life. And they used this, they used a, a, a Tibetan Buddhist meditation technique called Tulpamancy. And this is basically like a very powerful imaginary friend. And there are 4chan threads from this period of time where men are describing how they're trying to manifest Rainbow Dash into their bedroom. Here's what's interesting. All the ponies turned violent. So they kept saying that my tulpa's being aggressive, they were being locked in a room by their cartoon pony. Very interesting. I think it says a lot about the psychology of a brony. So, let's talk about Bone Gazi, or the time a witch, a Tumblr witch stole bones from a graveyard. So this is a great post, and this is gonna, this is gonna add to an ongoing theme in this presentation. So. What happened? A Tumblr witch named Ender Darling posted in a secret Facebook group for queer witches about her bone collection. Members of the queer witch Facebook group asked Ender Darling if her bones were critic ethically sourced. They weren't. Then someone posted screenshots of the whole thing on Tumblr. Right, so if you see this sort of thing happen about you on Tumblr, you're in big trouble. Uh, PSA, Tumblr user little fucking monster is stealing human bones from cemeteries in Louisiana. Please don't let them get away with this and spread the word signal boost. I love this. So this is a Facebook interaction from Ender Darling. I'm absolutely interested, but you need to be careful with the state and federal laws. Oh, I know. I looked it up. It's all good. I wouldn't even be offering them if there was a chance someone would get in trouble. Me, LOL. <laughs> she got arrested. So that did happen, yeah. Um, but this is not the first and only time there has been human remains discourse on Tumblr. So this is a really good post. Can you literally imagine dying and having your body donated and instead of being used for research or organ donation, some Tumblr Yahoo with a URL like Cummy Kitten <laughs> buys your skeleton, takes selfies with it, and unknowingly you're at the center of Tumblr drama but you're fucking dead. <laughs> what, a wildly what a wild hypothetical that for the sake of my fragile emotional well-being I will assume is not based in some recent hellish event I have yet to hear about. Well, it was, so this was... <laughs> This was called Tombler, and this was a user named Cummy Eyelids who was receiving uh, human medical waste in the mail from other Tumblr users and then turning it into jewelry. And then she made everyone really angry when she bought a skeleton at a flea market and then was taking selfies with it. I love Tumblr, it's the best. Um, right, so we can't really talk about internet occultism without talking about the crystal girl bosses of Instagram. Uh, this woman identifies as a gem sorceress. I love that, that's awesome. Liberalism is amazing. Um, so here's some facts for you. Instagram crystals are a multi-billion dollar industry. Most of them are mined by children in Madagascar. They're very, very awful. They come from one place in Tucson. They have no magic powers. And just as a rule of thumb, nothing is magical in Arizona. Nothing. <laughs> it will not help you, I promise. Right, so around 2015, people started believing that internet content had like magical powers. Uh, you might have heard the term cursed images. This was the first image to be labeled as cursed. And it's just like a man in a tomato or apple room. I don't, I don't know what's cursed about it. And yet I can also feel its energy. It's very strange. And then this is also around the same time that a bunch of weirdos became obsessed with using Pepe memes to magically make President Trump president. Uh, I mean, just look at this. This is so dumb. Like, this is just the dumbest. Anyways, enough said about that. I will also group in, oh yeah, here's the most cursed thing I've ever seen. Um, this lives in my brain. I hate this. I, I, I don't know how he moves this way. I just, it really bothers me. Look, is it sped up? Like, how is he doing this? Anyways, you get the idea. Um, right, so I would also include Shaman YouTube in this. This is an eight-hour binaural beats psychedelic <laughs> playlist. If you guys want the link, I can send it around. Um, so uh, I don't need to play all eight hours of this. I mean, unless you guys want me to play all eight hours. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Isn't that amazing? Anyways, 
I love 100 Gex. So, um, Twitter stands started casting hexes a little bit afterwards. This is actually a Twitter curse that was sent to me by a uh, Twitter user. I tweeted that I don't find any of the couples believable in Parks and Rec, Good Place, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and other Michael Schur comedies. I think it's weird they do like improvised weddings at the workplace. Think about it. It's very strange. They talk about sex all the time, but they don't kiss on screen. Anyways, <laughs> Michael Schur has a very, very rabid fan base, and they started cursing me in Aramaic, Latin. I think this says that my food's going to be full of worms. Yeah, it was, it was a big day for me on Twitter. Um, also recently, a fan of the Minecraft YouTuber Dream stole grave dirt to cast a Twitter curse. If you know what all of those words mean, congratulations. <laughs> you win the event. You, you are the moment. You are the meme in the moment. So all of the occult internet drama I've described to you is now happening simultaneously on TikTok. We've got cults, we've got curses, and we've got bone drama. So first off, last year, TikTok witches cursed the moon. This was considered a bad thing. I have not heard any updates about this, and I'm very worried about the moon's energy. This is also my favorite genre of internet content, which is a person confidently and enthusiastically talking about something that makes zero sense. And I think that's amazing. But this is, this is what happened. Basically, a bunch of fresh baby witches decided to band together, hex the fae, and then the moon. I'm not gonna explain any of that. But this was my face when they cursed the moon. Uh, so, also, TikTok users have reinvented lucid dreaming, and they're calling it shifting. They're sort of using the power of algorithmic content to, like, go to Hogwarts in their mind. <laughs> Very normal stuff, totally fine. But then TikTok spiritualism reaches its logical endpoint. Occult! So this is my favorite thing. They posted so many videos about how they're not a cult. But it's like, if you're not a cult, why did you post that many videos about it? So here's an example of the TikTok cult. I think it's really uh, illustrative of the whole There's vibe. There's a lot of you guys who have came here from TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like they already lost their mind. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the TikTok cult. So it was called The Garden. Um, it started trending after a British influencer named Tree posted about it. Uh, it had been going on for 12 years before it was discovered by the app. But the viral attention spiraled out of control Users started showing up to the compound, and then a rumor spread that mm, people were eating cats. So that's not ideal. Um, also, there's this guy. Um, I love this guy. Uh, he, he's, he's watching us right now. Um, he's, he's, in your, he's in your head. There is no such thing as a coincidence. The fact that you're watching this video means you're energetically aligned with me and this message. Your thoughts create your reality. Wait for it. But you already knew that, yet you still live a life that you dread. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> because when you visualize your dream life, you unconsciously believe that it is unrealistic. Here's the hack. I've created a dream life meditation that uses questions and binaural beats. When presented with a question, your mind must accept it and your subconscious mind will absorb it. When listening to binaural beats, it puts your mind into theta frequency, yeah. allowing you access to your subconscious mind. Yeah, that's... Link in the bio. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's an app that he made and that he's promoting. Um, you've all been activated now. I'm not sure into what, but that's, that's in your brain now. Um, and then lastly, we had Human Remains drama kick off literally last week, which is great, because I didn't have an end for this presentation. So that was fantastic. This is John's Bones. Um, he's a Gen Z entrepreneur who's gotten in recently into the bone trade. And yeah, of course, he obviously has a TikTok to promote his bone thing. Um, and he said the thing that you should never say on the internet, which is, these are ethically sourced bones. Because everyone was like, I'm not sure they're ethically sourced bones. And it got really strange. He hasn't really addressed where his bones come from, but he has a lot of them. I didn't include the video, but he has a spine room. It's just a room for spines. I don't think that's, that's normal. Um, but to, to, to sum it all up, to sort of sum up the whole thing here, I, I thought this tweet was perfect. Every youth social media site needs its own drama involving stolen human remains. I don't know why, but I do feel like we now understand how this has happened. So I hope you're all very excited for a night of more of this, basically. Um, and let's uh, give a big round of applause for the rest of our speakers tonight. And uh, 
Thank you guys for listening. Buddy.